We're going behind the Iron Curtain in this episode of Airsoftology Reviews. Sometimes you want a sniper rifle, sometimes you want an AEG. Well, the Echo One Igor actually does both and actually pretty darn well. And we're looking at it this episode of Airsoftology Reviews. So what's unique about this gun is it is very much like a VSS, not perfect replica, but a lot of people do think it's an ASVAL or ASVAL. So don't be confused there. Some people are like, oh, it's not a perfect ASVAL. It is pretty darn close to a VSS with a few cosmetic differences. So let's start from there with the externals. So like I said, externally, this gun is heavily inspired by the VSS, which is the real world counterpart. The real VSS uses a nine millimeter by 39 rounds, really big, long nine millimeter round, shoots around at subsonic because the full integrated suppressor here. So that's what they're really mimicking when you get the Igor. So this is your integrated suppressor, which just serves as a big shroud for your inner barrel. It does not do any suppressing at airsoft, unfortunately, but it does look cool. You do get some texture here on the end, and although I do wish they did extend a little farther, the real one has that texture a little bit further down so you can grab a hold of it. Now, obviously in the real one, uh, this part's gonna get pretty darn hot, but in airsoft, it wouldn't matter. It'd give you something to hold on to a little far out because the texture is a bit farther. But again, it's purely cosmetic. You do get a plastic flash hider in the end because it is America, you're gonna deal with that. Uh, but if you live in a place where you can remove it, uh, you're probably gonna wanna paint over this one. If legally you're allowed to, if you're old enough and you have a place you can, and you're gonna be only using this on the airsoft battlefield. Sights in the front and rear are both made of metal. They're adjustable for elevation on both, not windage of course, because it's an AK. The section here where the grip is, which I do find very comfortable for a grip, is made of polymer. It's like a textured plastic, feels really good to the hand, and doesn't feel like you're gonna slip on it. Moving to the body, you're looking at a full metal body here, upper and lower, small little cover on the top, pops off just like you would on a normal AK, but the battery doesn't live in there. I'll show you where the battery is in a second. Low receiver is metal, short throw, like much shorter fire selector, but again, it works like your AK. All the way down will give you full auto, which is a great touch for a sniper rifle. In the middle gives you semi, and then all the way up gives you that safe. Flipping over to this side, you do get a rail mount, which is a nice touch, and of course you get the Echo One Igor trades on that side, and the Red Star, which is kind of their Russian branding for Echo One, on the other. In the box, you get two high capacity, 150 round magazines. So these are a little shorter round uh, magazines here. So high capacity and 150 usually aren't that synonymous, but because you're dealing with a sniper rifle and a smaller magazine, 150 actually is pretty darn generous for a magazine. Plus I do like the way it locks in. Although it uses like an AK uh, mag lock here, it's super simple to get in and lock in place. Way easier than a regular AK. So for you guys who aren't practiced with AK mag reloads, you're gonna have a really good time with this one. And rounding it all out with the stock, you're looking and a very long stock. What's interesting is on both of them, you get all this big opening here. It's uh, ambidextrous, super easy to use uh, with the sling attachment on the other side. Believe it or not, the battery goes in the stock. That's right, yes it does. You remove the rubber butt pad, it's got two Phillips head screws right here on the end. Actually, it's a really nice rubber butt pad too, good squishiness to it. And you can access the battery compartment. It does live down in the tube. I use the stick type battery like you would normally find an AK, but instead of going up top, it goes inside of the actual stock. What's good about that is, because Echo One guns are lipo ready out of the box and they give you a 9.6 battery and a basic charger. 9.6 is pretty darn decent, but because this thing has a good ump and we'll talk about in the chrono section, you might wanna make that leap up to that lipo and really enjoy the crisper trigger response and higher rate of fire. So jumping out to the chrono, you do see really good numbers, what you'd expect from a sniper rifle. A lot of sniper rifles kind of pull back and give you a low numbers and expect you to upgrade it. Because this is an AEG and you're getting that really solid Echo One mech box under the hood with all of those reinforced Echo One parts, you're actually getting really good numbers. So this is definitely a field gun. Even though it is short and seems compact, it's not something you're going to probably take the CQB unless you have higher CQB limits. But if you do, if you're not, you do have that semi-auto option where you can lock it down and use that for closer encounters or if your field requires it. Plus, if you want to blast the bad guys, you can always turn up that full auto and let the rate of fire rip, which is pretty darn healthy as well, especially if you make that leap to that 11-1 like I mentioned earlier. So guys, if you're looking for something that looks very different and you want to stand out on the battlefield but still have a sniper rifle and the option to go full auto, 
definitely take a look at Echo One's Igor. I mean, this is a pretty darn good value for your money, especially being LiPo ready, getting two high caps in the box. And of course, you can always purchase extra high caps if you want to do a full loadout, which is nice. As of right now, I don't think you can really pick up mid caps, unfortunately, so that may kind of cripple you for Milsom events, but it's still a cool gun nonetheless. I'll have a link for more to learn about this gun in the description below. As always, thanks for tuning in. If you're not currently a subscriber, click on the logo in the bottom right or in the description and you'll always be in the know. Plus, if you like what you saw in this video and want to learn more, I've got a link down there as well. And if you haven't had your airsoft fixed just yet, click in the videos on the right or use the info button at the top of the screen for more. And as the saying goes, everyone has an opinion and I do want to hear yours. So give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down on this video, comment and share.